<laughs> for those of you that are in Hawaii, good morning to those of you that are watching here in the United States, and I guess all of those that would be on morning time. Uh, I believe it's going to be afternoon in uh, other parts, obviously, of the world, but I'm so delighted that you joined us today. I'm Pastor Hank Kuhneman, and uh, I really felt strong from the Lord that I was to come to you today. Uh, it is the National Day of Prayer, and so we are going to pray for this nation, the United States, but we're also going to pray for the nations of the earth. Uh, I feel like I have some things that have been on my heart for a while that the, the Lord wants me to talk about, and uh, so if you've got a moment to you know, get a notepad and, and get ready to take some notes, we're going to let some people come on. I'm going to try to do the techie thing. I don't have my wife, Brenda, here. Uh, she's busy <laughs> looking over uh, a few things today that was on our task list, and uh, she said she might tune in. So, Brenda, if you did tune in, don't forget, my birthday is Tuesday, Brenda, and I know she's already set up the uh, massage for my feet and my back, chocolates, and a fan. Isn't that wonderful, all those of you that are watching? So the massage is the massage chair. The fan is she's going to bring in one of those, you know, I don't know, ceiling-type fans or whatever they are, and probably some M&Ms, uh, the peanut butter kind. So anyway, uh, I say that about my birthday on Tuesday, not to draw attention to it, but I do want to make sure that all of our uh, Flashpoint uh, fans that are out there, those of you that watch Flashpoint on Tuesdays when, when, when I'm there with Mario Murillo and Pastor Gene Bailey and Lance Wallnow, uh, I won't be on Tuesday because it is my birthday and I have some great uh, plans. I'm going to just relax, work on my trains, walk my three German shepherds. And, you know, Brenda's going to make me, um, she said she's going to make me a spare rib meal, which I love spare ribs and and all of that, so it's going to be a great time. And then also, those of you that do watch Flashpoint, uh, I did make this, you know, notification that the uh, last two weeks of May I won't be on due to my schedule as well. So I just wanted to tell you ahead of time so that you know why I'm not there. Hey, let's give some shout-outs real quick so we can let some people uh, come on real quick. And uh, that would be fantastic so I can see kind of where everybody's at. Today. Now, again, I'm not techie, so you got to be patient with me. Hey, did I also tell you that I'm going to be starting a new show kind of like this uh, coming up where we can just talk about prophetic events and, you know, things that the Lord shares with me that I have in my journal? Uh, I would just love to be able to just come on and, you know, talk about whatever, you know, the Lord puts on my heart. I think that would be amazing. Hey, by the way, I'm on Truth, uh, Truth Social, they call it. And I don't know how to use it yet. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> just so you know, I'm there. And uh, we'll, we'll work out all the details uh, as I get an opportunity to figure it all out. That's why I have a good staff. Hey, all right. I like the name Minnie. All right. Hi, Minnie. How are you? Carol from Washington State is in the house. And uh, uh, Ada, uh, let's see, Olivia. And we've got Judy, St. Paul, Minnesota. So you're probably a Green Bay Packer fan, right? <laughs> Happy birthday, Pastor. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll be the big 56 years of age. I mean, it's like, I can't believe how fast life is going, you know? It seems like just the other day I was asking for a bike, you know, for my birthday. You know, that was like when I was like 45. Uh, no, I'm teasing. That was when I was a lot younger. Texas. Hey, Terry from Texas. I like Texas. And we've got Trisha. Uh, from Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, Debbie is watching, and Janet, and Yahweh's Daughter. That is a great title, Yahweh's Daughter. All right, now, so I'm going to click over. I'll, you all stay there. I'm going to go over to Lord of Hosts, and I'm going to welcome some people there. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Please, God. Okay, here we go. You know how much you, I don't know about you guys, but you, those of you that are married, and you've got a great spouse like I do with Brenda, she she really, really helps me with stuff. So we got Sandy from Buffalo, New York. Wow. Uh, Angie from Louisiana. Karen from, Ta Ta I think it's Tazewell, Tennessee. That's cool. Jolene. Jerry from Michigan. You're 75. Well, what? A, that's a great age. You know what? With long life, he will satisfy you and show forth his salvation. You know, by the way, as more people are coming on, uh, one lady writes, I'm 10 years older than you. You're a youngster. Okay. You know, I've been saying that to my own son. So there you go. So, but, uh, 
you know, I was sharing with the church last night something that I want to mention to you, and that is this, you know, I was listening to a Kenneth Hagin tape, you know, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, amen. Now, if you notice over there, and he was talking about the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life, and he was asking, I guess he was teaching a class. He said, why did Jesus come? And they were all giving their answers, but it was so powerful when he brought it back down to what Jesus said in John 10, that the reason that he came was that he would come to give us life. That's the Zoe you know, kind of life, the God kind of life, and life more abundantly. And so that's what you need to continue to stand for. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Tullahoma, Tennessee. Where is Tullahoma, Tennessee? And uh, Jane from Maryland. That's cool. Now I'm going to come back over to the other one, and I'm going to make sure we've got some people coming on. And I'm going to get right to it. I'm not going to delay any longer. I want to share some things with you. Wait a minute. All right. Carol, good to see you. And uh, Cindy also, um, thank you that you enjoy uh, my messages. And Brenda, I really appreciate that. And um, it's really a blessing. By the way, you guys are amazing uh, as far as friends and, and partners with our ministry. Without you, we couldn't do what we do. And so, you know, a lot of times, uh, maybe I'm joking or something like that, or I'm in a very serious mood. But I do want to just mention to you how grateful I am for your partnership, your friendship, Many of you, you know, you say not only do you support us, but you pray for us. And I think that is the kindest things that you could ever do. And it's because of you that we're able to do what we're doing in the ministry. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll let some more people come on, come on in like uh, they say. Oh, from Canada, Kara from Canada. All right, we're in Canada. Let's see. Then we got Smithfield, Virginia. That's really cool, too. I like Virginia. Oh, you live in Sherryville. I don't know where Sherryville is. So I'm mentioning that to uh, Kaylee. I don't know where Sherryville is. So I'm just glad that I live in Nebraska because I'm right where God wants me. And if you've never been in Nebraska, it's not where you have a bunch of cows and, you know, uh, that's farther out. But, you know, I mean, it is modern here in Omaha. So you need to come and visit us. In fact, September 15th of this year, come and visit us here in Omaha. We're going to the arena. We're going to actually do a face or flashpoint uh, live event on September 15th. That'll be Thursday with the uh, Fab Four, as they call it. And it's going to be a powerful time. And then we're going to also have Kent Christmas there this year, Tony Soares, Pastor Rod Parsley. That'll be on Friday. Phil Driscoll will be there. Uh, we're going to have Kent Christmas, Kat Kerr, Brenda will be ministering, and then I'll be ministering also. And then on Sunday, we're going to wrap it up with Sammy Rodriguez. So it's going to be a very, very powerful uh, conference, September 15th through the 18th. Be looking for details uh, as we will be opening up registration, and we really would like to see you there. All right, the first thing that the Lord put on my heart is we need to understand, just as it's springtime, the spirit realm has been very active, and I don't know how you've been feeling, but it's been very active, and I say this kind of two ways. It's been active in the sense that there's been a lot of demonic chatter, there's been a lot of demonic uh, attempts to really come at people and uh, really create a distraction and a diversion. We're going to talk about this uh, Roe versus Wade a little bit uh, as we get into this. Uh, I think the enemy with this leak uh, has purposely tried to bring what the liberals do and uh, even some rhinos and those that are just corrupt, bad people, you know, uh, they want to create a distraction, they want to create deception, and they want to create a diversion. And uh, I say that because I really believe that this leak, obviously it wasn't just a leak, I believe it was a collaborated effort um, to draw attention away from some things. And uh, I wanna just mention this to my staff, Ryan, you're behind the camera here. If for some reason they decide to be the censor uh, social media that they are, is there another way that people can join us that we are doing this at all? You know, maybe what we'll do is we'll keep taping this and we'll put it out. Uh, you can go to hankandbrenda.org. Uh, that's our website. And you can also go to YouTube um, if, if for some reason that it gets censored. Because I really want you to hear what I have to say. And uh, let me know also in the comments uh, if you'd like for me to do this more often. And again, I'm trying to, to nail down the timing of our own show uh, where it'll just be Hank Kuhneman live, I don't know, something like that, where we can just come on and just, you know, spend some time together. 
uh, I do want to minister to you today. But there is a diversion that they're creating. They're creating a distraction. Okay, why are they doing this? Well, because there's been demonic activity that is really to wear out the saints. It's really to also create a false narrative in the earth so that people believe it. See, the enemy works this way. He, he operates as the prince of the power of the air. So he works in the second heaven. He works in the demonic realm, the occult realm. It's where the psychics, um, you know, operate. That's why, you know, if you're a prophet, it's not so much that you can predict, you know, that there's going to be a lightning strike somewhere. Uh, you know, it's not so much prediction as it is foretelling. And then also sharing the redemptive heart of God. Why is God doing things? Okay, so if there is a lightning strike, why? If there's an announcement from Roe versus Wade, why? What is the heart of God? What's the redemptive plan and message? It's not just prediction. So the enemy is trying to do things in the second heaven, warfare realm, and bring it to the earth realm. How does he do it? Well, he gets us to talk about it. He gets us to begin to discuss his plans. And we have to be careful because, you know, I've heard prophets say, well, you know, uh, the Lord revealed the plans of the enemy to me. Well, why are you sharing it? Sometimes it's meant to be quiet and prayed through. It's not meant to give it a voice so that agreement comes. And, and you say, well, I don't agree with the enemy. Yeah, you do when you add fear to it. That's what the enemy is doing. And so he's trying to create a diversion, a distraction. He's trying to wear down the saints and, 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 and get us to back off and think that nothing good is going to happen or that everything is going to continue to remain as it's been. And I'm here to tell you it's not. God has showed uh, the future th to this vessel. I don't know uh, what other prophets have seen. I have people say, well, will you go on this show and, and do this with this prophet? And a lot of times I say no, because what they're seeing is not what God showed me. And it may not be that it's wrong with them and that I'm right. It's just, I don't have that revelation. I have to stay with what God has showed me. And I say that because on February 12th of 2019, uh, my beautiful bride was coming uh, back from the office and I was working at, at my uh, home. It was two days before Valentine's Day. And, and I, I remember that I was wiping down the stovetop and there was a stubborn grease or something there. You know, we're meticulous. You know, we have three German shepherds, but listen, we, we are immaculate. Brenda, if you're watching, I am a very good husband. I do a good job. You train me well. I've been, I've been, uh, you know, I've been trained by a great lady uh, of 33 years of marriage. But I was wiping this uh, grease spot, and all of a sudden, I was caught up in the spirit, and um, I was shown the future. That's when I prophesied ahead of time that there would be a plague. I saw something coming to the earth that had to do with the plague, like in the days of Israel and Egypt. And then I prophesied that the decade would start off harsh, and um, it, everything was black from like. And again, I'm not setting dates, but it was black from like 2020 into 2022. And then I began to see the light breaking forth in 2022. And it was like mid-year, so like June, and it started getting brighter and brighter. And then by the time we were in 2023, the darkness was being pushed back and being harshly dealt with, and the light of God was coming. And then all of a sudden, it's like we were brought into a, a season of rest and great celebration that I was seeing in the earth. And people were saying, I remember when, and, and they were talking about all the dark days. And it was almost like they were so far removed from it because of what God was doing in an awakening, the moving of his spirit, and really holding some evildoers uh, to a place of accountability. Yes, it will happen. And it's on God's agenda. So I say that because then on March uh, 15th of 2020, it was right after they were talking about you know, the scamdemic, uh, that the Lord, uh, I was praying at 2.30 in the morning, and I felt uh, kind of like the book of Ezekiel describes this. I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you. Uh, I don't like to be sensational. I just like to tell you what, what happened. But it felt like somebody was grabbing my hair, which was a lot easier to do at 2.30 in the morning because I don't have all this hair stuff on like gel and hairspray. You know, my hair is all sticking up, contacting the planets, you know. But it was 2.30 in the morning and I felt the sensation of the hand of the Lord and it lifted me up. And uh, I would, this was 2020 and I was carried up and I was over the earth. And uh, I was like, what is going on? You know, that's what my mind was thinking. But my spirit knew that there was something that God wanted to show me. And 
at, at that time, I was taking over the earth and I was looking down on the earth and I could see like a camera it was zooming right in on the earth. But then all of a sudden I saw the United States and then it zoomed back out and I began to see the earth. And the Lord, I believe it was the Lord, but you might have heard me say I wasn't sure if it was the Lord. All I know is this, it might have been a very powerful angel, but it was the most authoritative sounding voice I've ever heard. So it makes me think that maybe it was the Lord himself was standing next to me and shouted really strong and said, divine reset, divine reversal. Now, they are talking the global elites. They're talking uh, reset. You know, they want to do a new world order. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how the enemy always tries to mimic and, and counterfeit what God is doing? Because, again, why did the enemy use COVID? Why did the enemy use vaccinations? I'll tell you, the enemy only attacks what he is afraid of. So if the enemy is attacking something, God always counters it. Genesis chapter one, the earth was without form. Darkness was upon the face of the deep and it was void. Yet watch what the spirit of God was doing in a time of darkness without form. Things were void. People couldn't, you know, if they looked at it, maybe make understanding of it. The Spirit of God was countering. It says the Spirit of God was moving among the face of the deep, and then God countered it. He said, let there be light. So I say that because COVID was an attack from hell. What's the redemptive countering? It's going to be a healing movement. And it's not just a physical healing movement like we saw with Mario Murillo. I was just talking to him yesterday. I said, Mario, it was fascinating watching you operate under the anointing. And he said, well, Hank, I love watching you operate in the prophetic mantle. And I said, wow, I, I, that's really great that, you know, you like our ministry that way. But I said, I feel that way about you as an evangelist. And, you know, he was very complimentary uh, towards the prophetic office. And, and, I, and I appreciate that, Mario. But the, the cool thing was, is it's not just a healing movement. This is why, like, when we do these Flashpoint Lives, we're actually going to other states. Uh, God has been showing us where to go. So you, you, you listen uh, very carefully where we're going because it's very strategic. It's going to be like where Elijah set up the altar, uh, you know, and, and really brought fire down upon the altar of Baal. Uh, so there's some strategic places. But I was telling this to, to Gene Bailey, the host of Flashpoint. I said, Gene, you know, what's amazing to me is even what we're doing with Flashpoint and then Mario's meetings with healing is what God is doing. It's what the countering of this thing with COVID is. Okay, it's not just healing of the of the body, it's healing of the nation and the nations. So it's not just a healing movement by way of medical science and, and, and infirmities that people have. It's literally the healing of the nations. That's why when I was caught up on March 15th of tw uh, 2020, that God was showing me this divine reset. He was showing me this divine reversal, um, you know, in the same way as they're attacking Always look for the countering of what God is doing, okay? The enemy only attacks what he's afraid of. And uh, look at he attacked the church, tried to shut him down. Why? Because the church uh, is going to be empowered by the spirit of the living God. So let's get back to this March 15th for just a moment. The other thing that I saw, and it actually happened, and my good friend Bishop Harry Jackson, he's in heaven now. He was my best friend, and we talked on the phone every day. And uh, I remember sharing this with him because after this vision, uh, I saw where the president, President Trump, was in danger, and uh, and I gave details about uh, where he was going to go. I saw details about uh, what was going to take place, and then he was going to have to come off the campaign trail. And then the Lord said in this vision that President Trump would have a Hezekiah moment where he would fall sick from COVID, but there would be certain prayers that President Trump would pray in this time when he would be attacked with COVID that would give God grace because President Trump would humble himself. And as Hezekiah prayed and turned his face to the wall, not only was grace given to the man, the King Hezekiah, but grace was given to the nation. And remember, there was an extension of 15 years. And so I say that because God's divine reset is the countering of the global elite's reset of what they want to do with New World Order, socialism, Marxism, and all of that. And so we are literally in the season of a divine reset, a divine reversal. 
And if you know what happened, President Trump was pulled off of the campaign trail shortly after that I had reported this to Bishop Jackson, who was on uh, President Trump's advisory board and so on. And, um, and, and they wound up saying, wow, it was for his safety, uh, just like the dream uh, revealed and the information that I gave to, to the necessary people. Um, but he also came down with COVID and he prayed. He said, I've never prayed more than I ever have. Well, Hank, why are you saying this? Because just as Hezekiah received grace, there's a grace on President Trump where God is not done with him. And uh, we're going to continue to see God uh, vindicate, uh, God settle the score. Game is over. That's why they're creating, okay, look at, again, the enemy is creating a leak from the Supreme Court, creating a diversion, creating a distraction. Okay, so what's the counter? The counter is, notice it comes right at the time of the 2000 mule uh, release from Dinesh D'Souza about uh, the election integrity. Perfect timing, enemy. But what God? what is God doing? Well, every lie, God is countering it with truth. And it's to really get to the root of what the scripture says. You have to bind the strong man. So we have to deal with 2020. It's so important because the scripture says you bind the strong man and then you can clean his house and spoil his goods. In other words, you can overthrow a fake administration. You can bring an absolute divine reset and order, uh, even in the midterms with what God is looking at and uh, the future of America. And just like Hezekiah got 15 years, there is a three election plan that I saw that there will be three elections or three actual terms that will be served. I'm not saying President Trump, so don't quote me that. I'm simply saying there will be uh, a certain uh, righteousness that we are going to see as a payback of what we've had to go through in the harshness of the season that we've been in. This is why when God prophesied in 2015, he said, uh, watch when a former president shall die. And on the very day that he dies, uh, I will shake the soil of, of America. And there was that uh, Alaska earthquake of 7.0. Because God said, now watch the redemptive plan. It's one thing to predict an earthquake or predict that somebody, you know, passes or whatever. I'm not impressed by that. What I'm impressed by is what is the redemptive outcome? You know, God, what is your message? Okay, sure, there's a sign, but really, what is the message? Again, the psychics can predict, but can they really foretell the future? No, they can't. And so um, the thing that happened is God said it marks a new era. So what does that have to do with everything? Well, it has to do with the... March 15th vision that I shared with you. It has to do with what God is saying, even as we're heading into the midterms. It's what we're, we're looking at, even with this, this leak with the Supreme Court. Um, God is on purpose with that 7.0 earthquake, President Bush Sr. dying on the same day of that earthquake, just like the Lord said, it marks a new era. God's trying to show us that there's new uh, faces that are going to arise right now. And um, God is the one, as the book of Daniel says, that takes down kings and sets kings back up. So this is what's happening. There's tremendous shifting uh, in the spirit realm. We talked about that at the beginning of this time together. On one end, there's tremendous uh, warfare and people are getting, quote, tired, which you shouldn't allow that to happen to you. And then on the other hand, there's an excitement because we are right there on the verge of this divine reset and reversal that God has uh, been planning. And we're also right on the verge of a great celebration, and we're on the verge of some major, major victories. That's what that Roe versus Wade represents. It represents life. Yeah, life to the child in the womb, but life to a nation. And also answering of prayer to those that have prayed, have humbled themselves, have turned from their wicked ways so that God would heal our land and give life to us. You know, people are crying out and yelling for, you know, we repent America, repent America. Well, why is it always that they somehow feel like they have the barometer of what is needed in the heart of God uh, to determine what will shift God's heart to either judge a nation or not judge a nation? If one man, Moses, could change the destiny of a nation, okay, when God said, I'm going to wipe them all out. And I'm going to start over with you, Moses. Moses said, no, you're not God. You're a God of covenant. And it will not be said of you that you went back on your covenant and you wiped these people off. And Moses stood up for Israel, the people, and God listened to the voice of one man. 
in the the example of um, Abraham, God said, "Man, I'm gonna, you know, come down. I'm gonna talk to my covenant friend Abraham. Is there anything that I will withhold from him? No, he's my friend, and so I'm gonna come and I'm gonna talk to him, and I'm gonna share with him what you know the justice that I have demands. In other words, it's time. The cup of iniquity over Sodom and Gomorrah is full." And uh, it was Abraham that imposed, just like people do today, America, repent. And they have their own, you know, uh, standard. Well, you know, this needs to happen and that needs to happen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why don't you, uh, rather than do what Abraham did, you know, he, he said, well, well, you save it by 50. And you know how there was a countdown, 45, 40. That was never God's idea. And I believe in all my heart that one of the saddest scriptures is that the Bible says in Genesis that after God came down and, and um, Abraham said, well, will you save it for 10? Well, there wasn't 10 righteous. The Bible says then that God walked and went his way. Abraham let God get away. If Abraham would have understood the power of covenant and the power of his intimate friendship with God, what could have been done? You think about it. What if, what if he would have said, would you save it for me? One righteous man. Don't ever underestimate the power that you have. It doesn't ever say that the people that were on the ship with uh, Noah were righteous. It said Noah was righteous. One man made a difference. And so you, on the National Day of Prayer today, you make a difference. You are making a difference. And I believe that even this announcement, this leak, this distraction that they're trying to you know, collaborate with is a powerful sign. That's why we need to keep praying for the Supreme Court justices that they will, in fact, uh, go through with this because I believe it's a major blow against Baal and Moak, those spirits of darkness, but it represents this Hezekiah um, restoration where God is going to turn back the sundial of all the harshness and the garbage that we've had to go through. Yeah, inflation, high gas prices, that's all going to change. Uh, I've seen it. Gas prices are going to go down, 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 down. God's going to bring in new faces, uh, new political figures that are going to really have the heart of America and the heart of you, and uh, the heart of also God and His church. This is where we're heading. And so not only is it to protect the womb and the child in the womb and give them life to walk on the earth, but also it's prophetic that there's something that God is protecting, the very life and future of this nation, the United States. And so we need to see that. Now let's talk about Ecclesiastes 3. It says that, that under heaven there are seasons and there are uh, times and purposes for all things. And I believe that right now we've seen certain times where it seems like the enemy has had the upper hand. No, he hasn't. God's allowing this so that he can hang in his own gallows. He can, uh, he can uh, be absolutely trapped in the traps that God has set, just like God set a trap in Exodus 14 for all of the Egyptians and Pharaoh. They thought probably that their God was the one that parted the Red Sea and God set a huge trap just like he's doing. And ultimately they went into the trap, the Egyptians and Pharaoh and, and, and the waters covered over them. And, and there is a redemptive promise that is coming. And you're going to probably see it in the, uh, um, the midterms. And even after that, and it's this, it says the Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more. I believe that there are some evil, evil, liberals, evil, evil media uh, personalities and different ones in politics and even rhinos and people that have compromised and people that have been part of treason. You're not going to, you're not going to see them anymore. Uh, Pastor, are you threatening? No, I'm not threatening. I'm simply saying you're not going to see them anymore. And that's up to God how he chooses, but they are not going to be the faces or the voices of this new era as, as the Lord is continuing to unfold his plan. So changes in the air, there's a new era. And I, want you to remember what Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 12 says. It says this. It says that the birds ha are singing, the rain has ceased, and it says that the sound of the dove is heard in the land. And so as you hear some of the things that are going to come out in this month of May, uh, some things are going to sound frightening just because God is, is going to shake very violently. Uh, over the next few months, um, and and it will appear, you know, like wow, you know, what's what's happening? God's hand is in on this, so you don't have to fear about it. Um, 
but you need to listen for the sound of the dove, the sound of the Holy Spirit. In other words, recognize when certain things happen in the earth, recognize God's hand in it, recognize his intervention, and uh, be careful not to call things that God is doing evil or call evil things God doing it. So there's a discernment that will be required, and that's why I'm going to continue to to come before you so that we can just kind of sort this out together. Um, One of the questions that the Lord wants me to ask you is, can you see the future? You know, I think the reason why people are getting caught up in the warfare right now is because they can't see the future. Uh, The Lord's been prophesying through this ministry for years that there would be an overturning of uh, Roe versus Wade uh, from the Supreme Court that would come down to the states that would literally shift America. And uh, it's because the Lord showed me the future. Uh, One such prophecy was given back in 2017 where God said, watch Alabama. When you see Alabama, uh, and it happens in Alabama, Uh, regarding abortion and they will outlaw it, God says, then it will happen in the Supreme Court. Well, that took place. Literally, there was uh, an outlawing of abortion, the uh, heartbeat bill in Alabama that, that, uh, you know, is a prototype, the Lord said in the prophecy, and it's what we're going to see happen on the Supreme Court. But there's one prophecy that I want to share with you also as we're talking about this, can you see the future? This prophecy was from March uh, 31st, 2019. I'll just kind of paraphrase it for the sake of time. But it said, uh, keep your eyes upon Florida. Keep your eyes upon Alabama. Now, notice the two states, Florida and Alabama. And some of you from Florida, you need to go, yay. Some of you from Alabama, I think you guys talk Southern, right? Y'all, is that right? Alabama, y'all talk Southern. Roll Tide. I didn't know you guys were so into detergent uh, down there. But um, so anyway, so keep your eye on Florida. I'm being silly. Keep your eye on Alabama. And then God talks about watching the border between Florida and Alabama and how there would be a natural shaking. This is March 31st, 2019. And you know, a year later, there was a there was a 4.0 earthquake that happened right there on the border, like the Lord said. Now, what's the redemptive plan? Again, it's one thing to predict it, but what is God saying? Here's what he said. He said, when you see Florida and Alabama, watch those two, watch the shaking of the border. He said, I'm going to do something for children. I'm going to do something for the future of the United States of America. And so, uh, well, think about what's happening in Florida. For example, you have Governor DeSantis that uh, signed a law stripping Disney of uh, his self-governing status. So there's a lot of things regarding the children that's coming out of Florida. And uh, it's amazing what's happening to Disney. They're being shaken just like that earthquake. And then, of course, what I just said, Alabama has had that uh, outlawing of abortion. Now, this is very important because God even says in this prophecy that there's going to come an absolute movement that's going to arise. Um, He said, you know, there's been movements where they've had movements for, um, you know, different ones, but there's going to come a movement with mothers and fathers. They're going to begin to come uh, for, you know, the the purposes of children. So the Lord is doing a lot of things um, that is very important. And can you see the future? Now, I say that because something that's your homework, I'm going to give you homework, and it's Joshua chapter 14. Caleb, who is now 80 years of age, it's 40 years later, he's coming and he says something really interesting. He's, he's wanting his, the full inheritance. And uh, he said, the reason I have this land and a right to this land and I will get my mountain. And this is so important. He said, because when the 12 spies, which he was a part of, went into the promised land, he said 10 spies reported what they saw. And he said it wasn't accurate what they saw. Now, that's likened to today. There's been pandemics, mandates, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff, the election. And, uh, you know, we've been, you know, having people reporting what they're hearing on the news and You know, the news has been attacking the prophets and attacking, you know, those that are standing uh, saying, hey, something's foul here. Well, the 10 spies did the same thing. They went by what they saw. They went by what the media was saying. Okay, Uh, there's giants in the land. There's no way we can do this. It's never going to be a win situation for us. And so the Bible says in Joshua 14, Caleb said those 10 spies caused the people's hearts to melt. And I'm telling you, preacher, I'm telling you, prophet, don't you dare back off just because it looks like this or looks like that. Don't you dare back off because if you cause the people's hearts to melt, they get into fear, they back off, 
or people begin to doubt what God has said, uh, or you start listening to the media over the voice of the Lord, you cause people's hearts to melt. And, and the 10 spies, according to Joshua, again, can you see the future? The Bible says that they died. You know how they died? They died of a plague. And how is that translated to today? I think prophets that were quick to apologize, um, hey, if that's what God told them, I'm not here to argue again with their revelation. But I do know some people and some preachers and some Christians that have completely backed off of, well, what's the use about trying to fix 2020, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Don't let a plague cause you to back off and take you out like it did the 10 spies because they were not part of the new era. Remember, we're talking about new faces, new era. They weren't part of it. That's why it's so important that you keep standing because can you see the future? I've seen the future. I've heard God speak to me. And so I have to hold to what the Lord has said in his heart, no matter what. You can't make it about your reputation. Jesus, what made him such a great son to the father is he made himself of no reputation and he wanted to only do what he heard the father say. And so don't back off. Um, you know, Joseph's bones, the Bible says, was one of the requests of Joseph in the Bible was, hey, when you guys go into the promised land, take my bones with you. And, and it's so important that you can see the future. And, and, and my heart is this, listen, God, take my voice, take my ministry into the future like Joseph's bones, because I'm not going to back off. And you know what I really believe? The Bible says that the uh, gravestones were open. And uh, who knows? And many of the saints uh, were seen walking. I believe that one of those, I, tell me what you think. I think one of those was Joseph, that the reason he saw uh, his bones in the promised land is because he, he had the revelation of, of, of the resurrection. And um, some people can only see what's before him. You know, the news says certain things or they see the uh, paid riots that are happening. Um, you know, and so they think, well, that's, that's really what reality is, you know, and it's so sad, you know, talking about abortion, we're going to kind of switch towards that here in just a second. Um, it's so sad that here you got these people, you know, they're spending all their time to try to redefine what a woman is. Now, all of a sudden they're trying to stand up for the rights of a woman and really single it into this is what a woman is. It's just such hypocrisy. But what's even more disgusting, and again, if somebody that's watching, you've had an abortion, listen, if you've asked God to forgive you, you are forgiven and you will be reunited with that beautiful child again. But what you need to do now is stand against those who are literally wanting to take a life of a child and uh, not just in the womb, but outside of the womb. It's, it's a form of child sacrifice. It's murder. Uh, it was meant through Planned Parenthood to be a form of extinction. We know that. Some of my great black uh, brothers and sisters, Bishop Harry Jackson, taught me a lot regarding that, that, you know, the whole abortion thing, Roe versus Wade, was really to exterminate the black race. And I have so many uh, people in my church that uh, their skin color is black, not that we even are paying attention. We love everybody. But here's the thing. It, it, it breaks my heart. And what even breaks my heart is those children never have an opportunity to live. So you see these people out there protesting. And I want to say, really, yay you. You're protesting for the right to murder a child. <laughs> they ought to be proud of themselves. But again, you know, they, 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 they turn the truth and they twist it into a lie. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, they, they, they become a, a reprobate. You, you, know, you ever notice that these people that think it's okay for a dude to dress up and, and become part of a women's sport, okay, and call that thing a woman. Well, that's called reprobate, okay, same way with, with abortion. But something that God is going to do is a sign. And again, what's the redemptive plan? Again, it's, it, I get a little concerned. I, I just want to talk to you as an elder prophet, uh, one that's been doing this since 1986. I, I feel like God has given me the right to speak about this. There's a lot of people all of a sudden that are springing up that are having uh, dreams and visions. Again, I'm not here to name anyone. I don't do that anyway. But I have a concern. And um, the concern is, yeah, in the last days, it says in Acts 2 that, you know, young men shall have visions and old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and my handmaidens in those days, I'll pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. It says in that passage, they'll prophesy twice. 
it says only once that there'll be a vision or a dream. And there's just been this overemphasis right now on people having dreams um, and and they're, they're becoming internet sensations. Again, I can't speak to their revelation. I'm not even here. Don't put people's names out, by the way. I don't know if you are. Don't put people's names out because you might think I'm talking about somebody and I'm not. And it's not also fair to the person that you're naming names to, okay? Because uh, they're not here to defend themselves. So, so don't do that. What I'm simply saying is look at a principle. Dreams, you have to be careful with prophetic interpretation because a lot of times when people have dreams, um, what they what they focus on, uh, they can bring that into their soul realm and then begin to dream it and call it the Spirit of God. Now, sometimes the Spirit of God will give a dream, but He also has to have that dream go through the human filter of the soul. That's why you can have a very accurate dream and there's a part of it that's like off. There's something, though, when the inspiration of God comes on a vessel and they begin to prophesy under the inspiration of God at that moment, I think there's a great, greater level of accuracy that comes because you don't have your human soul. Just like when Samuel went to the house of Jesse in 1 Samuel 16, God had to say, look, you're looking at the outward appearance. Turn your soul off. Listen to me in your spirit, Samuel, and I will show you who the next uh, anointed king of Israel is. And so, you know, there's a lot of folks that are having dreams. And I think what's happening is it's creating... Um, a lot of confusion because there's one person sees this and another person sees that and another person sees that. And some people say, well, who's right? And I've heard different people trying to explain the prophetic say they're all right. Some see this and some see that. I'm here to tell you as an elder statesman, they're not all right. There's a lot of prophetic error and goofiness right now. And you need to be careful. Um, you know, that's why, and again, don't put your interpretation on it. Why I'm just being very careful about, I, I would rather come to you like this than appear on somebody else's show. Now, I still appear on other people's show. Sometimes I haven't been on somebody else's show because of the busyness of my schedule, which is the truth. But I think the best way is to come to you and you hear it from my mouth because I've had people put prophecies in my mouth that I never said because what's happening is there's so much confusion. And I think the other thing that's happening is too much prediction. Just because you predict something, there's going to be a fire here. Yeah, but what is God saying? So let's not get caught up in the prediction or we're becoming uh, psychics under the name of, of prophetic. And, 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 and that is grievous to God. So, and it's not also, well, the other thing is, oh, that person's so accurate because their predictions come to pass. Well, why don't you say that about a psychic? Does that make them now a prophet and give them the authority in an office? Tell the heart, mind, will, and agenda of God. So let's, let's be careful. But uh, one of the things that we're going to see is great heat is going to be on um, uh, the, the, you know, the land. And, um, and the reason I say that is because uh, temperatures will arise and it's going to be a sign so that God can begin to show us that things are in fact on its way to be cooled down. And uh, so I want you to, to know that, that things are uh, going to begin to be set and reset by the hand of God. So the more they're talking new world order, the more they're talking about all of this global reset, realize again, the enemy only attacks what he's afraid of, but God is the one that is going to begin to reset and set things back in its rightful place. Um, one of the things that I want to also mention, and I want to read a couple prophecies, is God is asking some questions. And one of the questions that he's asking is really the first question we see of man. It's in Genesis 3, where God says, you know, Adam, where are you? And um, it's not the time to be hiding. It's not the time to not speak up or to speak out. out. It's not the time to not pray. This is the time that we really need uh, to be in prayer. And uh, we need to be a vessel that says, you know what, God, use me. I really, really want to be used by your spirit. And uh, when you do, you're going to be amazed at a supernatural boldness that comes upon you. Um, it, I, I'm telling you, if you will you know, not hide away, you know, if you're a pastor, don't hide away. You need to empower your congregation every week um, and, and tell them, you know, what's going on and what God's Word says about it. And don't remove yourself from the political scene. Uh, John the Baptist spoke into the political scene, okay? Uh, the Bible says in Luke chapter 3 that not only did he confront John, uh, or Herod, John the Baptist confront Herod, over Herod marrying his brother's wife, but it said many other evil things that Herod did. John the Baptist confronted him. Jesus even said, hey, go tell Herod the fox, you know, 
that uh, I cast out devils, I heal the sick, and by the way, tell Herod I'm not going to stop. So Jesus didn't, uh, you know, not confront or send a message to the king. And so, preacher, you need to speak up. You need to let God use you and not hide out. Um, another question the Lord's asking is Mark chapter 4. Why did you doubt? I think there's been a lot of doubting because of the, 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 the warfare that's going on uh, in the atmosphere right now. And um, I think people are getting caught up into fear. They're getting caught up into doubt. They're, they're starting to back off of what God says because it seems like it's taking too long. Uh, the Lord just prophesied on Sunday, said it's not long enough. So we'll, we'll watch how that plays out. Another question God's asking is, do you, uh, do you not understand the scripture? I think a lot of people are uh, putting their hope and trust in prophecies. And uh, I get it, but sometimes I'm listening to prophecies and, and I'm like, but where is not only the redemptive plan of God, which is a plan of help and a plan of hope. Again, it's one thing that you can predict something, but where is the redemptive plan? What is God saying? Why are those things going to happen? What does it mean? What are we supposed to look for? And then also, what is God saying out of his word? Because every prophet and every prophecy is subject to the, the prophecy of scripture. And so there's a lot of confusion going on because uh, and fear because people are not getting back to letting God reveal uh, prophetic narratives and applications out of Scripture. Um, John 5, Jesus shows up to a man who's been in a condition for 38 years, and he asks him a question. He says, uh, do you want to be well? And I really feel like that's kind of the question that the Lord is asking us today. Do you really, really believe? that things are going to get healed in America. <laughs> Do you really think it's going to get better? You know, I, I've been disappointed with some of the preachers. Um, and again, I'm not against preachers. I am one. Uh, I've just been disappointed because, again, um, in, you know, rather than what is God saying in the moment, we all run to the end time uh, scriptures and begin to, you know, not have the spirit of fear often, but it's a fear-mongering spirit that we pull out all the end time scriptures, try to make this thing fit, that thing fit. This is a seal. That's a seal. This is a whale. You know, I was joking, you know, different seal, different whale. But the point is, Gog, Magog, Eggnog, you know, setting dates. And, and really because it's, it's by the spirit of fear, they, they're literally trying to get everybody prepared for the Lord's return, which the Lord is returning, and we need to occupy. We need Maranatha, perhaps, today. But God's not on a rescue mission. He's not here to rescue us because, oh my gosh, the church is such a mess. I got to get them out of here. No. When Jesus returns, it's going to be a glorious church. So I look at some of this end time stuff that's being talked about, and I think, hey, it's wonderful if you want to draw attention to that. But the season that we're in right now is God bringing about an awakening, a global awakening that includes his church. It's why they were attacked, shut down. Again, what's the countering plan? The enemy shuts down the church. God's going to open it up. He's not going to take it away. And he's going to cause a glory to come on his people so that we can regain, begin to regain areas of influence. Uh, in like what Lance says, the seven mountains of influence, you know, entertainment, media, that's the new faces, it's the new era. And, and, and there's a triumphant church that literally is rising. And so it's not the church that's going to be caught away right now. And I say that because some people don't think it's ever going to get well. They think the answer of America getting better is remove the church. No, it's to empower the church with the Spirit of God and um, watch what God will do. And uh, last, I just want to say this. Let's talk a little bit about this uh, Roe versus Wade, because, you know, people are wondering, well, Pastor, what does it mean? You know, I, I really believe that it's talking about something shifting in America. You know, when you can outlaw from the Supreme Court of the land abortion, it's way deeper than that. It's not just a natural ruling, it's a spiritual uh, ruling. It's a spiritual judgment against demonic spirits that you could read about in the Bible uh, called Baal and Molech. You know, Molech was the, uh, the idol that they sacrificed the children by throwing them into the fire. Baal worship was the sacrifice and the aborting of children, murdering of children. And so when that starts being ruled upon by the highest court of your land, it's, it's a bigger picture of the, the tearing down 
and destroying of principalities and powers of darkness. And so it, it's a major blow against the kingdom of darkness. But it's also something that we need to understand that we as Christians need to celebrate. And that is not only are children going to be able to walk the earth and run and breathe, and uh, we just need to get more active in opening up, you know, uh, foster care and, and adoption agencies and things like that. But here's what it also represents. God, who the very foundation of his throne is made up of two things. It's made up of righteousness and it's made up of justice. We are seeing the justice of God. And I think even that leak, they're scared. The devil is absolutely terrified. We've been prophesying justice. We've been demanding justice in so many areas. Come on. COVID-19 truth, masks, vaccinations, mandates, um, you know, the election, integrity, what really happened. We've been demanding justice. And then now all of a sudden this leak comes out that this is what they're intending to do. And I think it's a major, major ruling from the hand of God that has to do with his justice. But also the other side, righteousness is coming. That means in this new era that like God prophesied, there's coming a sexual revolution in reverse. Okay. Disney is now getting judged, um, shaken, but what's the redemptive plan? God is going to shake until children are vindicated. They're protected. They're not being exploited in our schools and in entertainment. That's why, by the way, I don't know if you can see behind me, I have children's books that I've written, Mutsby and Milo, and uh, the, the, the uh, Galactic uh, Adventures of Captain Zepto. You can go get them at hankandbrenda.org. You know, don't keep supporting all of these secular people. You know, take books like that I've written and others that are Christian's you know, my stuff is very hilarious. It's not over Christianese. And I did that on purpose because I'm also trying to reach you, the Christian, but I'm trying to reach the secular because they need good alternative things for children. So this is a judgment of God that is coming. Uh, and it's also a celebration. Uh, doesn't mean you take the foot off the gas. Doesn't mean that the enemy isn't going to try some other tactic. Listen, they're already looking at something else yeah, because they know that abortion uh, is, is um, really being dealt with harshly and it's going to be dealt with harshly even in the, uh, in the state. Um, but what it really shows is something new is happening. So I want to just share this with you. August 4, 2019, God says, abortion shall be outlawed and forbidden in the land of the United States. August 2019, God prophesies that. And God says, and Supreme Court justices will vote righteous and they will overturn the laws. March 29th of 2017, God says that uh, he's moving and he's not uh, delaying, that he's moving now. And he says, I'm going to unite the United uh, States. And he said, there's going to come great changing of your laws. Okay, what's the countering act of God? This fake administration, what's the first thing that they went after? Okay, again, the enemy only attacks what he's afraid of. So he's afraid. Of, of, the, of the reforms that the Lord is going to bring and is in process of doing. So what does he do? He immediately has all these executive orders and all these weird laws, right? Just recently, they, they got a new uh, administration of disinformation or truth, which is a joke. Ha uh, Stalin had that, so did Hitler. Be aware of that. Well, what's the countering thing? They're so scared of the truth, okay? Some of the new media uh, outlets are going to rise. New networks are going to rise. Uh, entertainment and how there's going to be a censorship. Not all censorship is bad, especially when it doesn't take your freedoms. But what it does is it censors out the evil. That's where America is heading. And so you have to understand that the enemy was trying to do all these things with these mandates and these weird laws because he's afraid of of Jesus overturning the tables and setting in some new things. And this is where we're heading. And so God says the, the children in the womb who are uh, live leaping shall live outside and leap outside of, uh, outside of the wombs because they will have a chance to leap as abortion laws will, will be overturned. March 29th, 2017, October 15th, 2017. Just go very quickly. The spirit of the Lord said, watch Alabama. I will move through their courts and it'll be a prototype of what I will do upon the Supreme Court concerning abortion. Well, we know that was fulfilled as well. November 17th, 2019, God says, um, something unusual will happen that I will do with children that shall touch all the way to the Supreme Court, including overturning laws and abortion in your land. 
March 3rd, 2019, God says the enemy has thought that through massacres in the womb, through abortion, that he could stop the destiny and the future celebration that's coming. But listen to me, says the Lord, the light that is coming shall cause a great dissatisfaction, shall cause a great outrage, and they will say enough of the murdering of children in the land. December 31st, 2019, God says um, there has been sacrifice to the spirits of Molech and Baal, but God says this will be greatly dealt with and a blow against the laws of the land. Uh, because I've chosen this decade for your children. So again, don't believe the lies. Don't believe that it's never going to get any better. And uh, so I want to take a moment to pray here in just a moment. But I do want to also mention one prophecy. Let's see, this was the one I mentioned about Alabama and Florida, that God said there'll be a great announcement. So this was 2019, March 31st. A great announcement will come regarding Roe versus Wade. And there will be such a great rejoicing that is about to hit the land. But notice what it said in 2019. There also shall come a great backlash of anger because of what the Lord will do. So that's what you're seeing right now. Um, lastly, I want to say this. You know, on the National Day of Prayer, I want to pray now. It, it's interesting to me that, um, uh, hold on a minute, I'm getting a voicemail. I just got to make sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's good. Okay. I know what that voice is. Okay, great. I just thought I'd check it for a minute. Um, one of the things that, you know, people often say, well, you know, Pastor Hank, do you pray for this president? You know, we should pray for those that are in uh, places of authority because uh, they keep us from evil. Well, they're to keep us from evil, but if you notice how much evil that this fake administration is bringing upon the nation and the people. So I, I pray for them to be removed them to be found out because they were not legally placed in there by your vote, by the vote of the land, or by Almighty God. And so I pray for them. I pray that they would come to a place of repentance quickly and that they would be accountable for what they did. But I pray for the rightful president. I pray for President Donald Trump. And um, you say, well, that's so harsh. Well, you, you ever read the story of Daniel? Daniel chapter 6, verse 13 says that Daniel had no regard for the king. He didn't honor what the king was doing by the evils and the demands. And it said he had no regard for the king and he had no regards for his decrees or mandates. So there is a time where you do have to stand up as a reformer. Uh, there's times where you have to stand up. I'm not talking about an insurrection of violence, okay? Got to say that now. I'm talking about you stand up for your rights. You stand up for your freedoms. You stand up for righteousness and justice. And uh, so Daniel didn't have any regard for the king. Even when they threw Daniel into the lion's den, guess what happened? God came in, vindicated Daniel, who didn't have a regard for the king <laughs> or for his decrees. That's why it was in the lion's den. But ultimately, what did it do? The people that were all for the king, all bowing down, all part of the mandates, ultimately got eaten by the lions. And there was a major reform that was brought forth to the kingdom. And I really believe that this is where we're heading as a nation, as a people. Let's pray together, can we? This is the National Day of Prayer. Uh, it'll be interesting if the fake one even uh, utters a prayer. Uh, we know that President Trump on the National Day of Prayer, man, he was out there uh, calling us to talk to God calling us to, 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 to turn to the Lord. He was asking that, you know, God would heal our land. What a president. And uh, I thank God that he's not done with him. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you on this national day of prayer that first and foremost, we lift up to you the United States of America, the nation where, God, you have placed me. We don't forget about the other nations, but Father, we thank you for the United States of America. And Lord, we're asking now that you would move from the court of heaven and establish righteousness, establish justice. Lord, from your throne room, that we would have grace, your grace, your mercy. Father, your help in the time of our need, for we need it in this nation. We are asking for your mercy, Father, when we deserve even judgment. We are asking for your grace. We can't, therefore, God, you must. We are asking for your hand and your arm that is not so short that it cannot save. God, save America. Save our children. And, Father, we pray for our president, President Donald Trump, 
that, Father, you would protect him, that you will raise up your agenda, that you would protect him, Father, from the voices of those, Father, that would speak contrary to thy divine plan or will. And, Lord, we pray that it would not be of our own might or our power, but we are asking you for a divine intervention upon this nation, upon this earth that will bring divine resets and reversals, that will restrain and stop and expose the enemy and those that have cooperated. Father, those who have plotted evil, those who have planned evil, those who have had their hands in evil, those, Lord, who have stolen through treason and acts of treason, we are asking for you to shine your light of justice, your light of truth, and God, bring them to a place of justice and accountability. Father, we thank you that even as the dry land appeared in the day of Noah, when he looked out after the harsh rains, and even after the time, Lord, of the parting of the Red Sea, the dry land appeared, and the land of their promise appeared. We are asking once again, God, that the dry land would appear. In other words, that a new season, a new, a fresh start would come, Father, for those who have gone through harsh times. Father, we're asking you to intervene on this day. We are asking you for your great hand. Oh, God, that protects, that blesses, that strains. Lord, let your kingdom come. Your will be done. And let there be a great, 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 great disruption of the agendas of hell. That, Father, it'll almost be laughable because you cut off evildoers. Father, even those who are lying by way of media and social media, Father, may the spirit of truth counter it. That the voice of your truth, the voice of your spirit, would be so loud in this time and in this day that the enemy will be greatly exposed and that the eyes of people's eyes will be so enlightened today. I see the truth. I understand the truth again. Father, let there come a great awakening that men who sat in darkness shall see a great light. And that light shall be the light of Jesus Christ, but it shall be the light of your mercy, your truth, as you're healing the nations, oh God, keep us from harm. Keep, keep, us, from, keep us from things that man would desire to do to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes, Lord, Spirit, in your anointing, as healing breaks forth, as you bring restore, restoration and order, we thank you for a great and wonderful season that is coming upon us. And Lord, we set ourselves in agreement with heaven. We celebrate. We rejoice. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, I know I went a little longer today, but I wanted to on purpose. I won't always go this long, but I felt like there were some things that I just needed to say, and I felt like you needed an opportunity to hear it. So uh, if you enjoyed it, let me know. And again, I plan on doing shorter uh, programs, you know, once a week where we can just come together and talk about some things. Um, appreciate your prayers. And uh, know that Brenda and I are here for you if you need something. The main thing is don't be in fear. If God is for you, which he is, who or what can be against you? Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. i got to get on to some other things of my day. But I uh, really enjoyed hanging out with you. And uh, I really believe that what I said um, agreed with your spirit. And I believe that you're going to search the scriptures. And some of you are going to go back and listen and I believe it also lifted up your faith and brought some joy to you. So I really love you a lot. Also, get my children's books, uh, Captain Zepto and uh, The Adventures of Mutsby and Milo. We do have a first animated uh, series. It's going to start. It's coming out in September. We're working diligently on that so we can start, you know, literally having uh, TV shows for your children where they can, you know, be able to watch it. And so I appreciate your prayer and, and your help so that we can continue to move that forward. All right, well, I'm going to sign off. I love you all, and I'll see you very soon. And uh, stay strong. God is with you. I love you. Bye-bye.